Hi, this is Dr. Jane Pendleton, and this is my husband, Dr. John Pendleton, and we are back with Maranatha Minutes. We are here with Genesis chapter 20. As we continue through the Bible, be sure and join us. Uh, we're having a good time with it. So um, we're moving right along. We're almost halfway through Genesis. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. <laughs> yes. but it's, a, it's the greatest story ever told. So, um, but I got a new Bible. And we've got Lexi in the house because we're having sub-zero temperatures, a snowstorm, and um, the winds are blowing around 60 to 70 miles per hour. We are really getting hit with the winds with the storm front. Now, it seems to have died down here just a little bit. The oh, lights no. quit flickering. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the lights quit flickering. So we decided we better go ahead and film this while we have a chance. But Lexi's inside, so bear with us. She's our Siberian Husky. We'll, we'll show her to you here in this clip here. She's our new film director. Okay, that was our Siberian Husky, Lexi. She's our sweetheart, not always so sweet. <laughs> so if you turn to Genesis chapter 20, we're going to go ahead and begin. I want to show you that my Bible reads like a novel with subtitles instead of in columns. And it's a larger print for me to see since I'm visually impaired. And I really like this. So if you open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 20, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to get right into it. Okay? <laughs> Now, this is the story of um, Abraham and Abimelech. Let me say that one more time. Abimelech. <laughs> now, Abram moved on from there, meaning that he moved on from Mamar, into the regions of the Negev, and lived between Kadesh and Shur. For a while, he stayed in Gerar. And there Abraham said to his wife, Sarah, Lexi. Yeah. She is my sister. So here Abraham did it again. Yes. He did it in Egypt, and now he's doing it in the in the cave. He's saying that Sarah is his sister, which is true. It is his half sister, <laughs> but it's his wife. <laughs> then Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent for Sarah. Uh, he wanted, uh, and he took her. He took her for his. So she's almost 100 years old. You only live to be 120. She must still be pretty attractive. Mm-hmm. She had taken again. <laughs> but, God, but God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as dead. Because of the woman that you have taken, she is a married woman. Now Abimelech had not gone near her. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say, he is my brother? I have done this with a clear conscience and clean hands. Then God said to him in this dream, Yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience. And so I have kept you from sinning against me. That is why I did not let you touch her, nor return to the man's wife, for he is a prophet. And he will pray for you, and you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all who belong to you will die. Early the next morning, Abimelech summoned his officials. And when he told them all what had happened, they were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham in and said, What have you done to us? How have I wronged you? that you have brought such great guilt upon me and my kingdom. You have done this to me that should never have been done. And Abimelech asked Abraham, What was your reason for doing this? <laughs> I said to myself, There is surely no fear of God in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, though not of my mother, and she became my wife. And when God had me wander from my father's household, I said to her, This is how you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say of me, He is my brother. Then Abimelech uh, brought sheep and cattle and male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, My land is before you. Live wherever you are. <coughs> yeah, he didn't want to risk it, did he? I'm, I'm reading the story to the dog tonight. 
<laughs> She's all excited. She likes it. To Sarah, he said, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense against you before all who are with you. You are completely vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female slaves, so that they could have children again. For the Lord had kept all the women in Abimelech's household, I mean all of his hair, from, from conceiving because of Abraham's wife Sarah. So he put the sin from Sarah's barrenness on to Abimelech, King Abimelech, and then he removed it again when Abimelech let her go. Mm -hmm. So who says the Lord doesn't intervene? You know, obviously he says here that Abraham was his prophet and he just wasn't going to tolerate it. And no matter what Abraham did wrong, he was going to correct it because he made a promise to Abraham that he would. Yes. That they had a covenant between them, and it goes to show you that God doesn't break his covenant, even though Abraham's broke it a couple of times now. He has still, for the most part, showed faith. 